financial problems, elder law, tax problems, business matters, divorce, personal injury, bankruptcy, your life, your reality. Life is complicated. There is the law and there is reality. Welcome to Law and Reality, sponsored by Thav Gross. Now here's your host, Ken Gross. Welcome to this segment of Law and Reality. Jenny Wingo. Good morning, Ken. Nice to have you back again. Brian Small, giggly face. Oh, pleasure to be here this David morning. David Einstein, causing trouble already this morning. You're it's looking, early. You're looking good, James. All right. Today we're going to cover the offer and compromise on Jim's tax problem that we talked about last week. And then after that, the second part of the show will be I went crazy on my credit cards for the holiday. What do I do? Ho, so ho, now ho. I've got to take us back to the last segment of Law and Reality. If you recall, I was Jim, and I owned Jim's Family Restaurant that went under as a result of financial problems, leaving me with debt. In the show with Brian, we addressed the dischargeable debts in Chapter 7 that included my 1040 taxes for 2011 and 2012 if you said I waited to at least April 16th of 20. 16 to file the bankruptcy. Correct. But there was still $175,000 of non dischargeable payroll taxes that I didn't pay on my employees. So, if I recall correctly, we started last week with almost nine hundred in excess of $900,000 of debt. Correct. Brian, it was a did, mess. Brian did a little magic dust. He did what he, he does, what he does. You know, all his proprietary and confidential he had information. His hat on. And now we have approximately $175,000 of tax debt that we still owe and is still subject to being collected. Payroll taxes. We took care of, Brian took care of my income tax debt in the bankruptcy with good planning. All of his dust. But even though he's a guru, he confessed, he admitted on this show last week, he did, could not use bankruptcy to discharge the payroll taxes. I was disappointed in him as Jim, but, Jim, but I understand. Jim, I was giving it all she got. That's all I was doing. He tried. Right. But Jenny <laughs> is now going to be the star and my savior. I'm back to Jim. Okay. And is this the rest of the story, Paul this Harvey? This is the rest of the story. Okay. So Jenny, I've got $175,000 of non-dischargeable tax debt. I filed bankruptcy, so I've gotten rid of all the rest of my debts. Is there any magic dust left in the bag? There always is. Here's what I have. Going into the bankruptcy, I had a Corvette, I had $10,000 of cash, and I had an IRA of $10,000. Let's assume now my cash is down to $5,000, I still have the IRA, I have $5,000 of belongings, and maybe I have the vet, maybe I don't have the vet. I want you to tell me how that plays into it. What do I do? What is an offer and compromise, and how does it go about? Give me, tell me what it is first and, and how we're going to do this. An offer and compromise <coughs> is when the IRS, the Michigan Department of Treasury, agrees to accept less than their due, less than your liability, to make the debt go away, to wipe it clean. All right, so I owe 175. Mm -hmm. I offer you twelve dollars. Do you accept? <laughs> no. Here, I have twelve dollars. Twelve dollars and Great. fifty cents in my pocket. Well, I'll take it. Will it work? Well, I'll take it. Oh, okay. <laughs> if you're Ken, I'll we'll, take we'll it. If you're Jim, I'm shopping won't. for you now. <laughs> so, okay. I mean, how do I mean? Do we just pick a number or what? No. What we do usually is when you come in, we do an analysis, and the first thing that I do is we we start over here with assets. So we know right now you have 10,000 in your IRA. You're under 59 and a half, so we take the 10,000. Well, Jim is under 59 and a half. Correct, you're I Jim. have to confess that Ken, from all appearances, would certainly appear to be under 59 and a half, but that would be false. Don't judge a book by its cover. Right. Well, every, every other week you, you get to look under depends, 59 and depends a half. On what, yeah, <laughs> depends on the cycle. Go ahead, let's just go on back. I shouldn't, uh, my fault, 
for opening myself up to the issue. So the first thing we're going to do, and this is what I do for all my clients when, when they come in, it's a free consultation, so that we figure it out, so that you don't pay someone a whole lot of money that says, we so can negotiate much? it I got 10000 in my IRA, $5,000 of cash. So the first thing I do is I take 10000 and multiply by 0.7. Right, so, so we've 7, got 7000 because the IRS is going to say, you know what, you can pay your current taxes, but you, we want your IRA. Now remember, this is how we start. There may be some planning okay. later on how to lower that So amount. I may lose 7000 of my IRA. This is how we start the calculation, correct? What about my cash? Your cash I would have you spend down right now. Is, is what we would start doing. So it would be zero it by the time you're making the offer? Y you're allowed to keep about $1,000 in the bank okay. um, in your Personal cash. Personal belongings? The personal belongings, um, I don't agree with Brian's calculation of bankruptcy for an offer and compromise purpose. If you have jewelry or things that are insured or painting or artwork, but the reality is we're not really putting as much value on you know, furniture and old mattresses. So it's not really a consequence. That's because in bankruptcy. I don't have any fancy jewelry. In, in bankruptcy, I do you're, have a you're watch. allowed to protect for personal household goods and furnishings up to an additional $12,500 per person. Which everybody has less than that. Everybody, it, it covers unless completely. Unless you got fancy art. So for the most part, most of my clients, unless they have expensive jewelry right. artwork, don't have household items. Right, Nobody so wants it, your own right, couch. So, so those are my assets. Now, if the Corvette, if I sold the Corvette before the bankruptcy, mm -hmm. because Brian said I couldn't, in, in, said it was questionable whether I could keep it or not. If I had made the decision to sell it, is that a problem? Is that what's a dissipated asset? How does that fit into this offer and compromise? I hear that term. I've heard that term watching you on TV. What a dissipated asset is is when you have either inherited money, you have a 401k, something like that, and you take the money out when you owe the taxes and you don't pay the taxes. You spend it on something else that is what they deem non allowable. The same thing if you sell a vehicle. So if I sold the Corvette and put the money into on your credit cards then it would be a dissipated asset if you put it towards medical then it would not be a dissipated asset what if i was paying my mortgage with it then we would have to trace it and show that you were paying allowable expenses and we would have to fit that into the calculation so part of the planning is we would make sure that we can trace easily have mm -hmm. clients put the money from the sale proceeds into a, a a certain account that account will make the direct payment of medical of mortgage of food things that we know will pass muster fair enough that's correct is the debt piling up struggling to get by it's all about preserving future income bankruptcy is one option when it's right it's the least costly most effective way to save your home eliminate a second mortgage and wipe out credit card debt but you need to address the problem now we help people with bankruptcy Call the experts. We're Thav Gross. Our firm will solve your problem. 888-235-HELP. That's 888-235-HELP. If you're retired and in a financial crisis, there is a way out. It pains me when I see a retired couple exhaust their savings by paying credit card bills and for a home hopelessly underwater. Thav Gross specializes in helping retired people in financial crisis. You just can't keep paying until you're broke. You need to address the problem now. 888-235-HELP. That's 888-235-HELP. We're Thav Gross. Our firm will solve your problem. A lifetime of hard work. If you don't have the right plan in place, you can lose your home, your savings, and more. And you didn't come this far to lose everything. Samasco Law wants you to know that laws are changing. Today, the average cost of nursing home care is $85,000 a year. With proper planning, we can help protect your life savings and get you the Medicaid and nursing home benefits you deserve. How much can you afford to lose? Call Samasco Law today. Tax problems are major problems. Don't let the IRS levy your wages and seize your assets. There is a solution. We're Thav Gross. Our firm will solve your problem. If you're behind on your taxes and owe money to the IRS, call Thav Gross. We've been solving tax problems for 32 years. We stop wage levies, resolve unfiled returns, and obtain the best possible settlements. Call Thav Gross today, 888-235-HELP. It's devastating, the effects of debt and foreclosure on you and your family. There is a solution. We're Thav Gross. Our firm will solve your problem. Some fear the word bankruptcy. But in reality, it's a strategy to save your home and to eliminate debt. If you're in financial trouble, timing is critical. You need to take action now. 
We've been saving homes and eliminating debt for over 33 years. Call Favgross, 888-235-HELP. All right, welcome back. All right, so on the Corvette, we, I sold the vet. We used it to pay expenses. It's gone. That we could fit in the allowable expense category. Okay. So we had a plan for it. If you want to keep it, you would have to pay 80% of the value in your offer. All right. the bottom so I'm not keeping the vet. The vet we took care of. I've got seven thousand. I got to pay out of the IRA. We've brought the cash down. Now I got one hundred and seventy-five thousand. Does that mean my offer is basically seven thousand dollars, or what? What about my income? Okay. So then, what we do is we look at your income and expenses. Your wife is not liable for the taxes. However, we would have to consider if your wife had income. For she this has no income. Sin- okay. For the and you fear, file, I'm making seventy five thousand a year. And there's four of you in the household. Yes. Likely, what we would do then is we would take your net income minus allowable expenses for four people in the house. They give around thirteen, fourteen hundred for food and clothing. We would look at your mortgage payment and it's how much you can uh, take as an expense is based on what county you live in. Uh, we would look at the car payments. So at the end, what would it be? Say you had $100 after allowable expenses. Per and there's month? little things we could tweak. Yeah, per, per month. month. We okay. would multiply that by 12, and that would add 1200 Let's say that you don't have a car payment, but you need a new car. We may trade in and make sure that you have a car payment to use an ex- as an expense. If you have put student loans on forbearance, so we may you, have you start can, paying Give me them. a rough estimate. Based upon $75,000 worth of income, my house payment is a reasonable payment because it's a hundred and not, it's a $250,000 mortgage. Um, how much do you think my offer is going to be? We could probably get it down to 10000 There are expenses that are allowable that vary. What's your health So insurance. how do I pay the $10,000? So What if I don't have the money? Well, you do have 7000 in your IRA, so we know that right now. However, should you tell me you needed a new roof? And if we put that new roof on and your house is still underwater, we could likely make the argument that we spent it on an asset that's already being valued. I've actually made that offer before. To then reduce my offer then further? Then that would reduce your offer to further. To 3000 it, it very well could. We might okay. be able to get it down even further. How do you submit the offer? What's the process? So there's forms that we have to fill out. There's the 433A OIC and the 656 form. When I mean when we ma- when we make the offer, how much do we have to give them? You have to give them the filing fee, which is $186 and 20% of the offer, unless you meet the low income. So if I'm only offering them three thousand dollars, I only have to give them six hundred bucks plus the filing fee. That's correct. And then how long does it take to find out whether it's accepted or not? Well, typically, right now, in a situation like yours, where you are now a W two employee, not self employed, it's taking about ten to twelve months. And the reason is, is that you come in, you meet with me, we complete all the forms, we send them in. And then it takes about 10 months for someone to be if assigned. If I was self-employed, does it take less or longer? It seems to take a little bit longer, but I think it's because there's more investigation that has to be done. When you're a W-2 employee, your pay stub, it is what Do they it is. really investigate this, or is it a rubber stamp No, process? it is uh, definitely an investigation. So you have to be careful to make sure you put the right information down and that you're accurate in how you plan it? If you, what I like to do is <coughs> submit it accurately, so when they come back, they might ask for one document and then accept it based on the amount that we have submitted. And uh, that typically happens. So in my situation, going back, I started with $900,000 of debt. Brian took care of a bankruptcy to get rid of everything other than the $175,000 of non-dischargeable payroll tax debt. You're saying I can now come in here and potentially make an offer and compromise of somewhere between three and $10,000 and get rid of that, and that process will take 10 to 12 months? For, for the IRS. But what I want to, to really clarify here is that this is a math computation. If you're going and you're calling someone because you want to file an offer, they really should be telling you what the bottom line is. I have too many people hire people who don't know what they're doing, and I say, well, what number did they give you? Well, we didn't get to that. Well, we get to that very quickly when you meet with me because I want to know whether or not that's the route we're going to go. you're not going to put me into this offer and compromise unless you know it's going to work. We're going to calculate it, and I'm going to say, yes, it works, no, it doesn't, or here's your caveat. All right, we're coming. We've got a couple minutes up to a break, and then I want to get done with the tax issue. But go ahead. I just want to point out, with regard to this tax issue. How much is this going to cost me, by the way? Well. Go ahead. Brian, make your point, and then, uh, Jenny, you tell me. What I was going to say is, with regard to all of this, you'll notice that there is a strategy to get you out of debt, both with a bankruptcy and an offer and compromise. There's also an order of which the strategy goes. It was important in in Jim's story to make sure that Jim filed his bankruptcy first before we did the offer. 
because otherwise Jim's non-consumer debt would have been less than his consumer debt. And it could have put Jim in a more difficult situation. Because I would have gotten rid of the taxes, which was the non-consumer debt. Correct. And then, well, you have other non-consumer debt, which is business debt, but it would have been more even. And if Jim was making, instead of making 75000 was making 125000 so Jim might end up not being yeah, eligible for I, a Chapter 7 bankruptcy because he went in the wrong order. I okay. And so conceptually, to, to think of it this down way. Down to a minute, and Jenny has to tell me what this is going to cost. So take By doing seconds. it in the right order, you first went from $920,000 of debt approximately to $175,000 of debt. And then we went, took that one seventy five in step two and turned it into about $3,000 worth of debt. Well, if we cost. tried to do it, if we tried to do it in a different order, you could have lost that ability to get rid of the first $600,000. No, it would have thrown, thrown you into a chapter 13. It, no. No. You could have lost it. You could have lost the ability because you would have exceeded the debt ceiling in your, in your oh, debt. Oh, right. Big no. point. Then you'd have to do a chapter 11, which is a mess. That's right. Basically, what's this going to cost? Is, it, is this a $20,000 bill? In, is Jim's, this a in Jim's case, for the offer and compromise, I would, to do the federal offer and compromise would be a, a flat fee of about twenty five hundred. Right. The here's, state forms are similar, so we can that. work it out. It's offers and compromise are definable commodities. When you go to a professional to do it, they should analyze it and be able to give you a flat, reasonable fee. If you go to someone and they want ten thousand dollars for an offer and compromise, they're hosing you. That's what you need to know about that in a fact situation like Jim. It's real important that you get it straight. Now, we come back to the break. I want to switch to a new topic. I had some fun shopping for Christmas. I used a lot of plastic. I bought all sorts of toys and presents for my family. It isn't Christmas yet, but I got a problem. It's devastating. The effects of debt and foreclosure on you and your family. There is a solution. We're Thav Gross. Our firm will solve your problem. Some fear the word bankruptcy. But in reality, it's a strategy to save your home and to eliminate debt. If you're in financial trouble, timing is critical. You need to take action now. We've been saving homes and eliminating debt for over 33 years. Call Fav Gross, 888-235-HELP. Tax problems are major problems. Don't let the IRS levy your wages and seize your assets. There is a solution. We're Thav Gross. Our firm will solve your problem. If you're behind on your taxes and owe money to the IRS, call Fav Gross. We've been solving tax problems for 32 years. We stop wage levies, resolve unfiled returns, and obtain the best possible settlements. Call Fav Gross today, 888-235-HELP. A lifetime of hard work. If you're approaching retirement and don't have the right plan in place, you can lose your home, your investments, and your savings. And you didn't come this far to lose everything. Putting a solid strategy in place with Somasco Law legally protects your assets as well as your wishes. Since a will doesn't cover you medically or financially, Somasco Law goes beyond ordinary asset management protection to safeguard everything you have. How much can you afford to lose? Call Somasco Law today. Is the debt piling up? Struggling to get by? It's all about preserving future income. Bankruptcy is one option. When it's right, it's the least costly, most effective way to save your home, eliminate a second mortgage, and wipe out credit card debt. But you need to address the problem now. We help people with bankruptcy. Call the experts. We're Thav Gross. Our firm will solve your problem. 888-235-HELP. That's 888-235-HELP. A lifetime of hard work. If you don't have the right plan in place, you can lose your home, your savings, and more. And you didn't come this far to lose everything. Samasco Law wants you to know that laws are changing. Today, the average cost of nursing home care is $85,000 a year. With proper planning, we can help protect your life savings and get you the Medicaid and nursing home benefits you deserve. How much can you afford to lose? Call Samasco Law today. If you're retired and in a financial crisis, there is a way out. It pains me when I see a retired couple exhaust their savings by paying credit card bills and for a home hopelessly underwater. Fav Gross specializes in helping retired people in financial crisis. You just can't keep paying until you're broke. You need to address the problem now. 
888-235-HELP. That's 888-235-HELP. We're Thav Gross. Our firm will solve your problem. Uh, let's do announcements. Welcome back. I want to welcome our Flint viewers, Fox 66. Office in Flint is up and running. Everyone to know we have a new website for Thav Gross as well as the Law and Reality website. You can sign up for free consultations, sign up for our seminars, get free reports, how to uh, save your home, the hidden secrets with Reg X, and also Pat Samasco's report on Social Security. We have a seminar coming up, our first seminar of 2016. It will be on Wednesday, January 27th. I appropriately called it 2016, the year I became debt free. It is from 7 to 8.30 p.m. This is the chance to make 2016 the year you get rid of the debt. And it's not just getting rid of the debt, it's getting rid of the debt so you start saving that money. If you've been paying $1,500, $1,700, $600 a month on credit card bills, if you can get rid of that debt and start putting that money in the bank for the next 10 or 20 years, you have a retirement fund. That's the message that we want people to know. Is Jim going to be at the seminar? Jim will be at the Excellent. seminar. You sign up at thavgross.com or lawandreality.com or you call 888-235-HELP. Just look at it. It's on the screen. I want to thank our sponsors, Thav Gross and also Samasco Law. Now, back to where I was at. I went crazy. I spent a whole, I bought a whole bunch of stuff, big fancy TVs that curve, for families and friends, everybody's getting presents. Everybody but I got a TV? I just knocked up my credit card. <laughs> it's going to be a good office party. <laughs> 25000 bucks, And now I'm feeling a little bit anxious about it because those bills are going to come due. Here's my question. Should I just take it all back and be the Grinch of Christmas? The answer is yes, if you can. And, I, I, and I'm going to tell I'm you why. You've created fraudulent transfers which are going to be a nightmare to deal with in the world of bankruptcy. I'm not taking them back. Okay, then you're... you're you... So you're saying if I bought a whole bunch of stuff... I mean, I, I have money. I have income. What well, are you saying to me? Right off the bat, I, I'm... Who says I... Uh, what are you talking about bankruptcy? I spent $25,000 on stuff, and my credit cards are now up to $75,000. Mm -hmm. I'm still making good income. You're in, are you solvent or insolvent? I'm solvent. Really? I've got I got an IRA. I've got retirement money. Yeah, your retirement money doesn't count in the world of bankruptcy. I'm not talking about necessarily filing bankruptcy. I understand. Bankruptcy. Uh, are you saying you're right, my only solution to the credit card debt is bankruptcy? No, but if you're considering a bankruptcy, I'm not taking the gifts back. If you're considering a bankruptcy, everyone will hate me. I told them. Oh, yeah, I can just leave. No, you have to stay. Okay. If 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 you're considering a bankruptcy, you've created a nightmare problem. I'm here to ask problem. you what I should be considering. Right, and so if you have the option at this point to unwind the problem, you should. All right, let's assume I don't have the option to unwind okay, the problem. Okay, so now okay. if you look to, let's assume. What are my options? Okay, to chapter get rid seven, of that? chapter thirteen, debt resolution what's, and budget management. Okay, what's debt resolution? It's like the Ronda Rousey match. <laughs> debt resolution. <laughs> is the art of negotiating a settlement on your credit card debts for pennies on the dollar. All right, so let's just assume, okay, I'm not a bankruptcy candidate. I understand. Your point is is that if you run your credit cards up and spend a fortune of money and then you go to ba Brian or a bankruptcy attorney and you say, I want to file a Chapter 7 bankruptcy next month, that's going to be a problem in the bankruptcy. Is that, that's the point? It's Yes, for numerous reasons. Okay, now let's take that out aside because... If that's my situation and I come to you, you're not going to throw me out. You're going to help me, correct? That's right. All right, so we may have to wait before we file a bankruptcy. But let's assume I'm a situation where I'm making $150,000 a year. I have cash flow. I'm not a Chapter 7 bankruptcy candidate anyway. I might be a Chapter 13, but I'm going to have to pay back too much money in the Chapter 13 over 60 months. We could do debt resolution, right? Absolutely. Okay. Absolutely. So how does that basically work? Well, what happens is... is Because I'd much rather do that than talk about taking back all the gifts, Brian. I understand. So debt resolution is negotiating... I like that TV. ...a settlement on your credit card obligations. Once you have defaulted on the loans because the payment is too much, you are now working your way towards as they say, charge off or being sued, 
in the hey, time you're, period. You're confusing me. Isn't debt resolution where this is the, the program that we use that you and I have developed together that we don't resolve the debt through bankruptcy. We do it outside of bankruptcy over a 24-month period basically by not paying the cards and then using the money that we would be paying them to settle the debt. Is that a fair way of saying it? I couldn't have said it better myself. Per perfect. Now, I got one question for you. What about my credit score if I do that? Is it going to hurt my credit score? Of course it's going to hurt your credit score. But what's the key issue on the credit score? Isn't it to evaluate the credit score based upon short-term need versus long-term gain? It's a good way to put it. The bottom Explain line is... Explain how that would work. Credit scores, you have to look at... When, when a client comes in to see us, we look at... And they're, they're current with their credit cards, but they recognize that there's going to be a problem in the future. We're going to look at what do they need to accomplish with their good credit before their credit gets tanked. If they've come into us after their credit is already tanked, the goal is to draw a line in the sand below which their credit does not go any worse, eliminate the debt, and help them redevelop their credit. At the end of the day, the one thing you have to know is that credit scores heal themselves. So your credit score can drop all the way to 400, and it can come all the way back up to 850. Absolutely. So what I, here's how I like to look at it is when I say short term need, if I'm going out to buy a house next month, I don't want to do something that harms my credit score because the credit score is a big factor on getting a mortgage. If my lease is up on my car next month, I'll go lease a new car first before I do anything to hurt my credit score. But the more important thing is think about the long term gain. If all of a sudden I had $50,000 of credit card debt and I was paying 20% interest, that would be $10,000 a year. Over 15 years, that would be $150,000. I have to make $187,500 just to pay my taxes to earn the 150. Bottom line is, if all of a sudden I could change it and make the credit card debt go away and take that money and save it in the bank over 15 years, $12,500 a year, $1,050 a month at 7% interest, that's $332,000 saved. Here's the point. When you think about your credit score, when you think about your credit card debt, think about if I get rid of the debt and save the money, where will I be in 15 years? If that number's big, that's what you should do. And in this case, I'm Jim. I could have a choice. I could have $331,000 in the bank in 15 years, or I could be just struggling along to make those credit card payments every month, and I'd run out of money. We'll be back next week with Law and Reality.